God longs for you to walk in freedom. Are you willing to trust God with whatever you find? If so, He's ready for a stroll, and He promises to walk with you every step of the way. Our memories are strongly linked to food. We raised our kids in Asia, and I can remember many times over a family dinner, we would reminisce about places we missed, places we liked to eat in the United States. We'd talk about them all, and then we'd all come up with agreement that we're gonna go for barbecue when we land back in Florida. Now that the kids are grown and gone, I always make sure to cook up some of their favorite foods when I have them home again. We are emotional beings. Many of us have precious memories linked to food, and these memories can evoke warm feelings of joy and contentment. Those feelings can stand in stark contrast to some of the realities of our daily lives. So it's not surprising that we turn to food to restore our emotional balance when we feel stressed or hurt. But here's the thing, it's not the food itself that made those memories special. It was the people who laughed with you around the table. It was the long hours you spent laughing in the kitchen while you prepared your special family recipe, a recipe written long ago on beat up, stained recipe cards. The problem is that too often we rely on food to make us feel better. We use it as an escape from our worries and our frustrations. Basically, we invest food with meaning. But food can't talk and it can't listen. We look to it as an escape from our worries and problems. And all it can really give us is momentary comfort and some pleasure at the time and possibly a lot of extra weight to deal with. We enter a cycle of turning to food to divert our attention from our stressful situations. And it's really easy to do because food, yummy food, is readily available. And we can trust it. We all have our favorite go-to foods. We know exactly how they taste and we can trust them to deliver each and every time we put them in our mouths, at least for a little while. Now food can make us think that we're satisfied. The University of Turku in Finland actually did a study in 2017 that found that eating food, any kind of food, actually releases feel-good chemicals into our brains. Of course, this is not surprising when we think of our God, our Creator. He created food for us, and it's meant to nourish us and to satisfy us. However, the same can't be said for all of our relationships. Generally, our emotional pain results from a breakdown in our relationships. Unlike the predictable taste and satisfaction of foods, mending relationships, rifts in our relationships, can be much harder to do but we were created to live in relationship. God created us to have relationship with Him. That's why we're here. So if God Himself desired relationship, it's not surprising that we as human beings crave it, even with all the ups and downs that come with it. Genesis 1:27 says, So God created mankind in His own image, in the image of God. He created them, male and female, He created them. So what is it like to really live, to be in the image of God? Well, Paul writes about this in his second letter to the Corinthians. He shows how seamlessly God works with Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit. 2 Corinthians 13, 14. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. God knows how important it is that our relationships work. Without them, we can't really live out the full and free life that He desires for us. Think about it. Most of life's greatest moments only reach their fullest potential when shared with someone else. Those special memories you have would be nothing without the people and the community that inhabits those relationships. We don't carry around special memories of food unless they're attached to people. So that momentary satisfaction you get is really only a counterfeit or a substitute for meaningful interactions with other people. Paul writes about this. Let us not give up meeting together, as some are in the habit of doing, but let us encourage one another, and all the more as you see the day approaching. He wrote these words to a persecuted church. They were in the thick of it, and he knew that they could only make it if they stayed together. They worked together and endured the hardships 
together. God understands our emotions. He knows how hectic our lives can get from time to time. He also knows that people, in their imperfections, can let us down. Still, He assures us that fellowship with Him and with other believers is the best way to deal with our problems. When we struggle with food, too often we find ourselves relying on it to soothe us as a welcome diversion from other stressful stuff going on in our lives. But then, by doing that, we set a familiar cycle into motion. We eat because we're stressed, we're upset, we're lonely, we're frustrated, so we put on the weight. Then, we become discouraged about that extra weight, which makes us feel bad. And we figure, what's the use in trying? And we abandon all restraint and return again to food for comfort. And the cycle starts again. Does that sound familiar? How about if we recognize this tendency to soothe ourselves with food and then decided to consciously take it to Jesus instead? What if we realized, really internalized the idea that having that tough conversation or of forgiving someone who spoke to us just a little too hastily would benefit us much more than a bag of chips or a piece of cake. Food without people provides only momentary satisfaction. However, time with God and with other believers can actually strengthen us and give us real resolve to meet our stresses head on. Yes, there's a time to eat cake. And when you do it at the right time, you can enjoy it as the sweet blessing that it is. James 1 verses 2 through 5 says, Consider it pure joy, my brothers, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith develops perseverance. Perseverance must finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. God often teaches His best lessons through our trials and our struggles. Remember, every journey starts with a step. And today's choices, they really do fashion tomorrow's reality. So make them great ones. Bye-bye. Ito ang pinakagusto ko sa lahat. Yung tinatawag na freedom! Yung tipong malaya ako no? at malaya ka sa kakainin mo, gaano kadami yung kakainin mo, kailan mo kakainin, anong klase yung kakainin mo. Lahat ng freedom nasa sayo. Kung merong Anli Rice, meron din tayong tinatawag dito na Anli Freedom! Ito yung napakalaking diferensya kung compare mo siya sa diet mentality. Kasi sa diet, alam mo kung anong ginagawa niya, hindi freedom eh. Ang ginagawa ng diet sa'yo, kinukulong ka niya sa lahat ng klase ng bawal. Tipong bawal nito, wag yan, nakakatabayan, lahat na lang ng bagay, laging may restriction kapag ikaw ay kumakain. Gusto mo ba yon? Ang hirap ng ganun. Yung tipong mayroon kang kinikrave, pero kailangan mong i-deprive yung sarili mo kasi baka tumaba ka. Eh kung kailan naman meron na akong pambili ng pagkain, ngayon pa, na tipong, dapat malaya na akong kainin yung gusto kong kainin kasi may pambili na ako eh. Pero hindi magagawa yan kapag ang diet mentality ang nasa isip mo. Kailangan yung freedom mindset. Yung mindset na yan na ang Panginoon lamang ang makakapagbigay. Sa diet mentality, lagi akong nag-crave. Tapos kapag hindi ako makapag-give in doon sa cravings ko, pakiramdam ko, deprive ako. So dumating ako sa point, ano ba yan? Kung kailan meron na akong pambiling pagkain, ngayon ko pa hindi makakain yung gusto ko. Kasi ang issue ko naman, ayaw kong tumaba. Pero sa freedom mindset, ang kagandahan dito, nasa iyo ang bola. Ikaw ang magde-decide. Kung marami ang pagkain na nakalatag dyan, ikaw ang decide anong pagkain ang uunahin mo. Anong pagkain ang dadamihan mo, pagkain, anong pagkain ang kukuntian mo lamang. Kapag may nakita kang sabaw doon, sa dami ng handa, may nakita kang sabaw, uunahin mo yung sabaw kasi nakakahydrate yun eh. So, feeling mo, busog ka, tapos nahydrate ka pa. Merong doong portion sa book ng Find Your Way na kapag feeling mo ikaw ay gutom, mas maganda kung uminom ka muna ng tubig. Kasi usually, hindi ka talaga gutom, dehydrated ka lamang. So ngayon, pag ginawa mo yon, may tamang sukat na yung pagkain mo, yung chan mo, minsan nami-mix up lang eh, na akala mo gutom yan, pero hindi pala. 
kulang lang sa tubig. No? Kailangan mo mag-intake muna ng tubig. Pagkatapos ng liquid o sabaw, kakain naman ako ng gulay. Dadangihan ko yun. Gulay or kung anuman ang healthy na pagkain na nandoon sa lamesa. Bubusugin ko yung sarili ko nun. Yun ang tinatawag ko ng mind tricks. Feeling ko, pag busog na ako nun, mayroon na akong karapatang kumain ng lahat ng pagkain na nakahain. Lahat ng ulam, titikman ko, lahat ng dessert, kakain ako nun. Pero for sure, konti na lang yung makakain ko. Dahil, binusog ko na yung sarili ko doon sa mas healthy na pagkain. So kahit ano man ang mangyari, bahagi ako ng kwento. Walang pagkain doon na hindi ko nakain. Lahat natikman ko.